الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam Indeed it is very important for us to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the successful are those who are constantly reminding themselves that they were created by the maker and they are going to return to the same maker. So what was the purpose of this creation? You and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it wherein he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Indeed, I have not created mankind or jinn kind except so that they may worship me. And we know that when we came onto this earth, we were naked, we had no clothing, we were clothed by those around us. And thereafter, we were looked after by those around us. They were parents in most cases, sometimes guardians, sometimes someone else. And later on, we became from among those who were concerned about livelihood, what is known as rizq or sustenance. And as we started earning, one of our duties was not to become so attached to what we've earned in a way that we forget where we are going. Many people in life, it is all about money. It is all about earning to the degree that we forget where we are going thereafter. Wealth is meant to assist us to get to the destination, but it is not the destination itself. Some people think when I've earned a million or a billion, I have succeeded. Wallahi, that is not correct. What is correct is when you have earned a million or a billion, you have a chance to be able to spend in a way that when you get to your destination, you are actually in the right place. And this is why today I would like to highlight the importance of spending correctly, spending in a good cause for indeed many of us have wealth but how many of us actually spend it in the right way sometimes you have money and you only think about spending it on yourself so you become miserly you become selfish not realizing that when you put it in a good cause it will then become that which is fruitful it will grow it is an investment مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةِ Allah says the one who, the example of the one who spends in the right cause, in the pleasure of Allah, in the cause of Allah, is the example of a seed. A seed. The verse is longer, but I, the point I want to raise is the seedling. You know that when you sow a seed in the ground, what do you expect? You expect it to grow and flourish. Allah speaks about how it is multiplied thereafter more than 700 fold more than 700 fold imagine if you were to invest an amount of money and people tell you we will give you 700 percent profit 
Subhanallah, I'm sure you would have to tell me too where that is because I want to put my money there as well. Well, Allah is telling you that when you spend in the right cause, when you reach out to those in need, we will ensure that it is multiplied not only 700 times, but 700 is the minimum. So what should I do? My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how wealth actually belongs to Allah. It is temporarily with you and I. The evidence of it is the minute you die, the minute you close your eyes, that money, that gold, that silver, those dollars, those pounds, whatever it was, will come to no avail. It will not be able to help in any way. But what you spent while you were alive, that is what will help you. Allah says in verse number 24 of Surah An-Nur, وَآتُوهُمْ مِمَّا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي آتَاكُمْ Give them from the wealth of Allah. Give them from whose wealth? The wealth of Allah. The wealth that belongs to Allah that He gave you in the first place. How many people work so hard, they don't earn much. How many people do not work hard, but they earn a lot. It is from Allah. Allah is the one who chooses whom to give, how much to give. Now you have it. What are you going to do with it? There will come a day when Allah will take it away from you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Or Allah takes you away from it. And this is why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the one who turned away from Allah. When he gets to the day of judgment, he will wish that he could give all the wealth he had as ransom to say, take it, but give me freedom from the fire. And Allah says, it's too late. When you had it, you loved it so much that you forgot where you were going. Don't do that. My brothers and sisters, when you have something, realize it is an amana. It is a trust from Allah unto you. Either it will go away or you will go away from it. Use it while you have it in the right direction. So what do you use it for? Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He speaks of how it is a charitable deed to spend your wealth, even starting with your own family members, to put a luqma, luqma meaning a morsel, one morsel of food into the mouth of your spouse, your children is an act of charity. Some people have lots of wealth, but they don't spend on their family members. They don't spend on their relatives. Those are known as dhawul qurba, those who are related to you. They have a right. Look after them. Take care of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in every single way. Similarly, when it comes to a person who is generous, he becomes close to Allah through his generosity. Don't let your heart become attached to materialistic items for indeed it becomes detached from Allah. The more you are attached to the world, the more you are detached from Allah. It is a seesaw effect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So what is of absolute importance is we realize when I have something, Allah is watching. What am I going to do with this thing? Am I going to do something prohibited, something haram? If that is the case, I have invested in a deal that is going to come about with a loss. You put your money, you're throwing it away. Allah says, don't do that. Spend in the right cause, in that which is halal, that which is permissible. If you were to spend in that which is permissible, the minimum is you get a reward for having protected your wealth from being spent in haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us halal sustenance. Ameen. May Allah grant us the ability to earn in a halal way. Because there are so many ways out there that are not halal. They don't come about with barakah, with blessings. They come about with the snatching away of the blessings. They come about with issues and problems within our homes, within our health. Learn to be charitable. Those charities will help you become close to Allah. In a hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the generous person is close to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is close to the people and he is far away from hellfire. You helped someone on the day of judgment, you will be helped. Remember this. If you assist someone in this world, you help them through their problems. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah will help you on the day of judgment through your own problems and difficulties. Then the hadith continues to say, a miserly person, a stingy person, a selfish person, they are far from Allah because they don't realize why they have the wealth. Do you have the wealth to amass the figures? 
If that was the case, like I said earlier, when you die, where will that wealth go? It is gone and gone for good. It will not help you. What you spent is what will help you. That which you keep with yourself, it is going to be depleted. But that which is with Allah, it will last forever. One of the tafasir of this beautiful verse is when you have deposited something with Allah, you will see its fruit. But if you kept it with you, it will deplete itself. When I have a million, I kept it with me. As I close my eyes, the heirs are fighting for a portion of that million. But if I spent it while I was alive, I'm smiling that I spent it in a good cause. Here is the masjid that I built. Man lillahi masjidan, bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. Whoever builds for the sake of Allah a masjid a place of worship not in order to compete with people but for the sake of Allah I did it Allah says he will build for you a place in Jannah a home a house in paradise so if you want it you need to reach out sometimes even if it means to assist in the renovation or the upkeep of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah help us to use our wealth in the good cause then we have the same narration continues to say the person gets distant from Allah due to his miserliness and he becomes distant from the people due to the same miserliness when I am miserly What's the point? People won't want to greet me. They know this man, he's selfish. He's on his own. He doesn't like to help anyone, but he has millions and billions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So a person becomes distant from the people as well. And at the same time, he becomes far away from Jannah. Jannah to Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. What a great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On many occasions, he spent so much that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told him there is no harm upon Uthman, no blame upon him. He does not need to worry after today. He has spent and he has earned his paradise. He was known as Ghani, Ghani meaning wealth, wealthy, a person who has a lot. And he bought, he bought one of the wells in Medina Munawwara to help the Muslimin. Battle of Tabuk, he gave so much more than a lot of others. And the Prophet wasallam praised him and said, he has earned Jannah through spending. This shows us that you can actually earn the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through spending your wealth. My brothers and sisters, let us spend in a good cause. Also, what we need to realize is that the Prophet wasallam says in a very, very short but powerful narration, Protect yourselves from the fire, even if it means by being charitable with a piece of a date. A piece of a date, not the whole date. Someone might say, oh, I'm not a rich man. So the rich people give, but what do I do? I need. No, learn to give even from what you have, even if it is a little. Because you can save yourself from the fire by a charity you've given that is not a date. You know, dates you buy in kilos. Allah says not the kilo. Allah did not speak of the kilo of dates. Allah did not speak of 20 dates, 10 dates. Allah did not speak of one date. He said a piece of a date. Imagine how many of us can say that we cannot give that. Astaghfirullah. We can. We can give more than that. If you have one cent to give, give it. It is possible that that cent will come and save you on the day of judgment. It was a charitable deed in the right cause. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and may Allah help us all. Allah says, those who hoard gold and silver, let them be warned of the day of punishment, the day when that will be smeared onto their heads and foreheads, and they will be told, taste from the heat of that which you did not spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verse reads as follows, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ فتكوى Allah <laughs> Thank you.
الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سلك طريقهم وسار على نهجهم واقتفى أثرهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون my brothers and sisters in Islam, for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that when we pass away, our deeds come to an end besides a few deeds and he makes an exception. It is important for me to know which deeds are going to benefit me the most and which deeds are those that will continue even after I have died. Because you and I know that when a person dies, the deeds are finished, the deeds are over. But Allah says, and this is through the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us something very beautiful, very interesting. إِذَا مَا تَبْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ if the son of Adam, meaning if a human being passes away, then his deeds are cut off except through three things. What are these three things? The first one is knowledge, beneficial knowledge that he left behind. You knew something, you were not selfish with it. You taught it to others. When you taught it to others, they taught it to others as well. And those third generation taught it to the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. Six generations, seven generations after you died, people are benefiting from something you taught them, something you left behind. This is why my brothers and sisters make it your business to teach people. Be generous. Secondly, the hadith of the Prophet wasallam speaks about how a child that you leave behind would actually benefit you when they do good because you invested in teaching the child. You invested in looking after that particular child by giving them a decent upbringing in a way that they pray for you. They make dua for you. A child who prays for this person, they will definitely benefit from that particular prayer. Similarly, the first point that is actually raised in that hadith is something known as Sadaqatun Jariya. What is the meaning of Sadaqatun Jariya? A charity that was given by this human being and the charity, the effects of it last well beyond the death of that person that is known as Sadaqatun Jariya. Continued charity. You help towards a school, towards a madrasa, towards a masjid, towards an orphanage, towards any good cause, you know, the forest to have some fruit trees or trees that present or give benefit of the shade, etc. And so many other points, you help make the pathway, the roads, whatever else it is, you have assisted in some way, people pray for you every time they benefit from it. And even if they haven't prayed for you directly, the fact that you reached out to them for the sake of Allah, you will achieve the benefit of it. My brothers and sisters, let's think deeply. What are we doing with our money? What are we doing with our wealth? And let us try to invest it in the best possible way. I'm not talking of investments for here in this world alone. I'm talking more of the hereafter. Think about where I can put my money so that the minute I close my eyes, I have my own paradise island somewhere in the real paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from whatever he has bestowed upon us. Sallu wa sallimu yarhamukum Allah ala al-Nabi al-Mustafa wa al-Habib al-Mujtaba kama amarakum bithalika rabbukum jalla wa ala faqala azza wa jalla inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi ya أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد أفضل الخلق وأكرم الرسل ورضى اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم ارض عنهم وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا 
وارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم وحد صفوف علماء المسلمين اللهم وحد صفوفنا اجمعين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين وانصر المظلوم في كل مكان انك انت اعلم بالظالم والمظلوم فانصر المظلوم يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والارضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد اللهم احفظها من كل سوء ومكروه وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم احفظنا وانصرنا جميعا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين وارحمنا إذا صرنا إلى ما صاروا إليه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم وأقيموا الصلاة يرحمكم الله